Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this particular video, we will learn about complex numbers and geometry. We will solve this problem related to complex numbers using simple Euclidean geometry. If you know how to do it, it, it is a real treat, a mathematical joy to actually do this. Uh, this problem is from ISI B star B math entrance, but it's also useful for mathematical Olympiads like IOQM, American math competition and so on. You can check in the link in the description for more resources related to this. It says, the problem says that Z equal to X plus IY is a complex number such that Z minus I divided by z plus i, the absolute value of it, is less than equal to less than 1. It's strictly less than 1. We want to show that y, the imaginary part of the complex number, y, is greater than 0. That's the goal. So, how do you show that? Believe it or not, it's related to a very simple geometry observation. So let's first talk about this geometry observation because it's very useful for many problems. Suppose you have a rectangle, then both of the diagonals of the rectangle are actually equal. The diagonals are equal. I think you can easily prove it by showing the two triangles, maybe this yellow one and this green one. If you can show these two triangles congruent, then the two sides will be equal and so on and so forth. So you can put the proof of the fact, and this is a very easy fact, that two diagonals of a rectangle are equal. You can put it in the comment section. Things start to get a little bit interesting when you work with parallelograms, which are not rectangles. So, it's, a no, it's not a rectangle, so not all the angles are 90 degree. So, one of the angle, let's say theta, will be less than 90. And the other angle, let's say alpha, will be greater than 90. So, what can you say about the diagonals of the parallelogram? Let me draw the diagonals. Clearly, one of them is larger and one of them is smaller. The simple fact is this. The diagonal opposite to the smaller angle, theta less than 90 degree, the smaller angle, the diagonal opposite to the smaller angle is smaller. The diagonal opposite to the larger angle is larger. So, why is that? Well, Notice that if you look at this triangle, let's call this A, B, C, D. If you look at the triangle A, D, C, A, D, C and triangle A, B, D, A, B, D, this one, A, B, D, then A, D, C and A, B, D are almost the same. A, D is common between them. And DC is equal to AB. AD is common. And DC is equals to AB. Right? So, they're almost the same. Only difference is this angle. So, what if I just rotate? So, I'll just do one thing. I will rotate DA. So, since angle theta is smaller than alpha, I will rotate dA, slightly enlarge the angle, and so that this is like, this total angle is now alpha. Theta is smaller than alpha, I will rotate it a little bit so that it's now alpha, the total angle is alpha, this total angle. So this little angle will be, I don't know, alpha, uh, alpha minus theta. So this little angle is alpha minus theta, this is theta, so 
Now what we have is we can just join these two. This is a another triangle. So now you see that this triangle and this triangle, you can compare and see that they are congruent. So how do you how do you show that this side is larger than this? Or this this BD, the diagonal opposite to the larger angle, is equal to this A prime C, which is larger than AC. How do you show that? This is a elementary geometry question, a challenge for you. You can put it in the comment section. There is a simple proof for this fact. Angle opposite to larger, a side opposite to larger angle is larger. Let's think about it. You can also think of it in a very simpler way. If the aperture is smaller, the side lengths are same, but the aperture is smaller, then certainly the length opposite to it is smaller. If you keep the side length same and make the aperture larger, aperture is the angle, then the side length is larger. This is a very intuitive way. How can you rigorously write it? Write in the comment section if you can. Okay, so keep this geometry fact in mind. And with this, we can actually solve the problem. So what is the problem again? It says that Z minus I divided by Z plus I, absolute value of it, is less than 1. So let me write it one more time. Absolute value of Z minus I by Z plus I is less, less than 1. So the first thing we will do, we can distribute the absolute value. Z minus I divided by Z plus I is less than 1. So how why can we do this? So if I have two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, the, abs the absolute value of the ratio is equal to the ratio of the absolute values. This is a very well-known uh, result in complex numbers. But again, can you prove it in the comment section? It's a very simple proof. You can do it algebraically as well. Okay, so now that we have this, we can just uh, cross multiply. So absolute value of Z minus I is less than absolute value of Z plus I. This is the situation. So let's draw the picture, okay? So we have uh, X axis and Y axis. This, is, this point is I, which is essentially 0, 0,1. This point is minus i, which is essentially 0, comma, minus 1. It's very important to think about complex numbers as points in the xy plane. It makes a lot of things simple. Complex multiplication is that essentially rotation and dilation. We talk about this relationship of geometry and complex numbers in our Math Olympiad program and in our ISI CMI entrance program in great detail. You can also look into the book Complex Numbers from A to Z by T2 Andrews Q for more information on this. Let's come back to this particular um, point. So let's take the situation when Z is here. Z is here means Y is greater than 0. Y is greater than 0 means it's, uh, it's somewhere here above the X axis. Y is less than 0 means it's somewhere here. Okay, so it's here means the this particular angle theta is less than 90 degree. Now let's draw Z plus I. Z plus I is just simply this particular point. You complete the parallelogram. So this is Z plus I. And this is the corresponding vector. So you can also do the simple parallelogram law of addition of vectors in this particular case because these are just points. You can think of Z, I, all of the complex numbers as points in the XY plane. So this is Z plus I and similarly this is Z minus I, this point. Z plus minus I, right? So this is Z minus I. Okay, so notice 
theta is less than 90 only when y is greater than 0, right? If, if it is above x-axis, only then this is less than 90. This total thing is 90, right? If it's above x-axis, only then it becomes less than 90, okay? So, the diagonal opposite to something that's less than 90, diagonal opposite to this, is smaller than this other diagonal. So, this other, the length of the other diagonal, this, this one, this length is actually absolute value of z, z, z plus i. And this smaller diagonal, which is opposite to theta, is actually absolute value of z minus i because these two are parallel. This forms a parallelogram. So, the length of this one is absolute value of z minus i. So, when z is above the x-axis or y is greater than 0, absolute value of z minus i is smaller because this is the smaller diagonal. It's smaller than the absolute value of z plus i. And there you go. The proof is complete. I did not use anything related to complex multiplication or anything else. I just simply use the geometric fact about complex numbers. And there you are. There is a solution. So if you know what's going on, if you are not really trying to derive the geometric fact that I talked about a while ago, this the entire picture and geometric interpretation takes about 30 seconds. Uh, I hope you learned something from here. Conceptual clarity is of paramount importance when you are solving interesting pro mathematical problems. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Keep on doing great mathematics. Keep on solving good problems. Check the link in the description for more resources. I I, I'm sure you will have some fun with them. Okay, take care. Bye.